we've got some tentative numbers that we're paying a bit of attention to. They're not a top. We don't expect a top in gold and silver. We don't think we're in 1980 in gold where you peak or in 2011. We don't think we're in that situation whatsoever. We think it's likely to continue for another year or so. But in the immediate run, we could see a dramatic surge. I think the surge in silver could carry us well over 50 rapidly. Now, that sounds ludicrous. Michael Oliver, a prominent market analyst recognized for his technical analysis and forecasting skills, suggests that if silver reaches $32 again, it could signal a triple top breakout, potentially leading to a significant upward surge. Oliver notes that surpassing the $32 mark may see silver quickly exceed $50. The silver market displays robust signs of a potential breakout, as analysts maintain a bullish outlook despite recent price fluctuations. Silver has been on a solid upward trajectory, recently marking its first surge above $31 per ounce since July. Industry experts remain optimistic about silver's future, holding on to their ambitious forecast of reaching $50 per ounce. While this target may take longer than initially anticipated, analysts generally agree that a significant silver rally will likely begin in 2024 potentially reaching the milestone by late 2024 or mid-2025. Oliver emphasizes that significant brokerage firms predict gold will reach $3,000, and historical trends indicate that if silver maintains its long-term price ratio of 2% relative to gold, it could potentially hit $60 if gold reaches that level. This optimistic outlook aligns with the current momentum in the gold market, where bulls are capitalizing on rising bullion prices. They are setting their sights on the $3,000 per ounce milestone, driven by monetary easing from major central banks and a closely contested U.S. presidential election. Spot gold reached a record high of $2,572.81 an ounce and is on track for its most robust annual performance since 2020, surging over 24%. This combination of factors underscores the potential for significant gains in gold and silver markets. Before diving in, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Stay informed and ahead of the market. Its prior peaks in silver in May, which was much higher than gold's peak in May. Gold peaked in April, and silver went on up into May. Silver dropped, got above 32 then and dropped back down to about 29. And it got above 32 again in, I think, July. And then you had the big sell-off into August. It got down close to 26. So really a deep, deep cleansing. And you came up off that low pretty rapidly. And last week you were down to about 28. Next thing you knew, you're 31. Boom. You know, so uh, silver and gold have declared that process is over. The issue now is what's on the other side of this. And I think it's going to be very dramatic. Uh, we've got some tentative numbers that we're paying a bit of attention to. They're not a top we don't expect a top in gold and silver. We don't think we're in 1980 in gold where you peak or in 2011. We don't think we're in that situation whatsoever. We think it's likely to continue for another year or so. But in the immediate run, we could see a dramatic surge. And I think that the dramatic surge, for example, if you get silver back to 32 a third time. Now, think about this. If you're a point and figure guy, you keep it X's and O's. You know, upticks or X's, downticks or O's. You went up to 32, back to 29, downticks, back to 32, double peak, dropped down and took out the 29 low and went to almost 26. So the point and figure chart broke down, cleared itself out and shot back up now to 31. You ever touch 32 again? That's what you call a pending triple top breakout. And I bet you touch 32, you're not going to stop. You're going to blow through. I think the surge in silver could carry us well over 50 rapidly. Now, that sounds ludicrous. Well, right now, there are some brokers out there, big brokerage firms that are talking 3,000. That makes me a little nervous because, frankly, that's that's sort of a minimal pause point for us. So let's just assume gold in this surge is going to go to 3,000, which is another 400 bucks beyond where we've reached today. Okay. If silver during that same process were to take its spread relationship to gold, which is now above 1.2 and pressing toward 1.3, if it were to go to 2%, which if you go back over the last 50 years and look at the silver gold spread, price of silver expressed as a percent of gold, you'll see there are many, many years in that 50 year time where we reach 2%, 2.5, even 3%. Okay, so it's not abnormal. If silver merely went to 2% again, which again is a, a level we've seen so many times in the last decade, for example, it's ridiculous. It's normal. Silver would be $60 if gold were 3000 So I think that silver's dual highs that everybody knows about at 50 bucks. we get up through this recent stuff we've been 
up to 32 again and blow through that. I think that surge could carry you uh, up into the mid 50s at least, well beyond the $50 peaks that everybody knows about. And I think that's the potential for this pending surge that I think we're, we're on the doorstep of. Oliver believes that the period of congestion in the gold and silver markets has decisively ended, as evidenced by the recent price action observed last week. Silver experiences a remarkable surge during this time. Last week, silver jumped 10%, pushing prices above $31 an ounce, while gold made an unprecedented run to a new record high, rallying over 3%. Despite this impressive movement, silver's broader price action remains relatively muted compared to gold, a dynamic reflected in the gold-silver ratio, which holds support above 83 points, well above the May low of 72.67. Oliver also notes the noteworthy correction process in gold and silver that followed their surge in March and April. While silver continues to rise through March, April, and May, reaching new highs, it later enters a multi-month correction that involves some downside pain. Let's get back to the interview. The process of correction in gold and silver that occurred after their surge in March and April, in the case of silver, March, April, and May, silver continued up a month beyond gold. Then we entered a multi-month correction in silver with some downside pain. And for gold, it basically a yawn sideways in about a $100 range, just up, down, up, the noise, in other words. But a congestion period where the gains that we saw, dramatic gains in about a six-week period in March, April into May, corrected. And we had a pause, profit-taking, shorts came in, doubted the market, et cetera. We think that ended last week's action, ended that, that process. In the case of silver, silver went up, if you measure from the low of last week to the high, it was over a 10% upturn, literally within a week. Gold had a little bit more than a 4% upturn from its low of the week to its high of the week. So they both said, I'm out of here. Okay, the congestion process that we saw, multi-month process, we think is over now. Now the question is more dynamics on the upside, and I think it's coming. Today is noise. Ignore today. I don't think today disproves that argument whatsoever. In the case of the stock market, we have a situation that is, I don't want to pound the table yet, but in 1987, I caught the crash. I was a broker at the time, independent broker, and I caught it in a small way with puts. Okay, I didn't make a fortune, but I made a huge percent gain in a very short period of time with some puts. And it taught me a lesson because what I did it based on was quarterly momentum of the S&P 500, not its price action. Price action of the S&P looked just like it does now, just upward, pull back, upward, pull, just happy market going all the way, going to go forever, you know. You pull back a little bit in early October, the new quarter in 1987, and though price didn't pull back in any meaningful way, when you looked at the price chart, you weren't breaking a thing. Quarterly momentum was blowing a floor that it had established over a two-year period, where if you looked at the quarterly momentum, it just kept coming back to the same horizontal level over and over, and finally in early October broke it, and you crashed. It was a surprise that nobody caught. Uh, it was a panic uh, beyond panics. It happened back then. I, I've gone back and researched it. Gold was in a non-trending situation then, really. But gold during that bad week went up 7%. So somebody didn't tell gold it was supposed to go down if the stock market crashed. Anyway, keep that in mind. Because uh, I know everybody thinks that if you ever get an event like that in the stock market again, and we have the setup for it now. I'm not saying it's going to get triggered, but it's about 4% below where the NASDAQ at 100 is right now next month. You don't want to be there. That therefore silver and gold must go down. And I think it's going to be a very interesting hypothesis uh, because factors have changed, technical dynamics have changed, and I don't think that's going to happen. And if you think it's going to happen and you're long silver and gold, then I suggest you better buy some puts on the S&P if our trigger numbers are hit. Okay. Anyway, I think we're hitting, we're about to move into very dynamic markets. The recent dynamics in the gold and silver markets highlight a complex interplay of factors affecting their price movements. Silver's significant surge after a period of congestion indicates a potential shift in momentum. As gold reaches new record levels, with substantial brokerage firms forecasting it to ascend to $3,000, silver's trajectory closely aligns with gold's performance, suggesting that both metals may experience further volatility shortly. As we wrap up our analysis, it's clear that the gold and silver markets are poised for exciting developments. What do you think? Will silver finally catch up to gold, or will it continue to lag? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching.